If your dog has seizures, if they're having fits, or if they've got epilepsy and they're on treatment, then it's really important to know what the aims of that treatment are, as well as how you can monitor the effects of the drug to check that it's at the right level, it's not getting to dangerous amounts, and to know when you need to think about maybe starting another drug. Gigi writes in with the next question, and she says that her rescue dog is now three years old and he developed daily seizures. He was started on phenobarbital, but he's just started seizuring to get today. It's had a couple of seizures and just he feels really bad for him. You know, seizures are really a horrible thing to to have to witness. The problem is, or the potential problem is, is that he's unable to be examined without sedation, even for collecting blood. So should Gigi still take her dog to the vet for another blood test or what should we do? What should she do? Is there any other things that she can do to help? Is there a problem with having sedation multiple times? So there's a couple of different problems here. And I'm going to start by saying well, there's a number of different causes of seizures. And I've said this um, many times in several other questions. I'm really a young dog with repeated seizures, with no problems on bloods, with no access to any toxins, and who's fine between seizures is most likely to be epileptic. They're most likely to have epilepsy. And really it's important to say that the aims of epilepsy treatment is to reduce seizure frequency and reduce seizure severity. So we're not necessarily trying to eliminate all seizures. Although that would be nice, it's not something that we're going to realistically be able to achieve in every epileptic dog. Now, if we take phenobarbital uh, as the kind of the example here, then 80% of epileptic dogs on phenobarbital are going to have their number of seizures reduced by at least half and about one in three dogs on phenobarbital are actually going to become seizure free you know so phenobarbital is a pretty effective drug i've actually got a whole article about phenobarbital over at rpetshealth.com and i'll leave the link in the show notes below now when a newly diagnosed epileptic dog is started on phenobarbital in particular after two weeks, the blood levels are going to have stabilized. And so at that point, we can then check them. And the reason we do this is for a number of a, a number of factors. The first is that in some dogs, they will need to have a higher dose just to reach the, the desired range within their blood. And the other reason is that we actually don't want the level to be too high because that can lead to an increased likelihood of side effects. Now, if we take a blood test and the level is it's within the, the therapeutic range, so the range that which we want it to, to know that it's working and a dog is still having seizures, then there's a number of different things we can do. We may be able to increase that dose a little bit more just to um, bring those levels up a bit without them reaching the toxic dose, or we may need to start thinking about adding additional drugs. So something like potassium bromide would be an example here. The other thing we can do is actually consider switching to a different anti-epilepsy, anti-seizure drug. So um, the example would be Pexian or Amepitoin as another kind of frontline epilepsy treatment. Now, if we're still having problems and we're still not getting any seizure reduction, then there are other things that we could be doing. But, you know, that's a, a, a much deeper topic and that's going to really vary depend on the, depending on that individual uh, individual dog. Now, if we're then talking in this case in Gigi's dog and who, who needs sedation and we may need to do frequent blood testing, at least in the initial stages, sedation is generally very, very safe. Depending on what we use, um, the vast majority of drugs don't have any cumulative effect so we can sedate a dog very safely you know day after day after day if we need to and sometimes we do need to do that so if, if, for example we've got a really nasty wound and we're having to change a bandage um, every day then we'll sedate for that and there's no concerns there really in general you know obviously some dogs will will have an increased risk than others but you know talk to your vet also as well to see if there's anything else that your dog can take at home to make him easier to handle in the clinic um, so that a full sedation is not needed so there's a number of different things um, that may be able to be given so that he feels a lot more comfortable he feels a lot calmer um, he may feel a little bit sedated but he doesn't need a full sedation to have that blood draw done try socialization visits so just go to your vet give treats that you know your dog likes um, sit in the waiting room for a couple of minutes and then leave again so that your dog learns that actually every time they go to the vets is not going to be the end of the world 
something nasty isn't going to happen every time. As you progress through those socialization visits, they can get longer. You can maybe go on the scales. You can visit the consult rooms. You can have the staff give treats. You know, all of these positive experiences will help to desensitize your dog to the stress of the vet clinic. And that, you know, can, can make a big difference as well, especially if you're then able to give something just to take the edge off their anxiety before they make that visit. So, you know, those are my thoughts here. We definitely want to be, you know, considering additional treatment or considering monitoring bloods in this dog because having a couple of seizures in quick succession is not something that's ideal. But equally, if your dog is epileptic and they're on medication and they're having the odd breakthrough seizure, obviously be in touch with your vet, but that is not necessarily in itself a need to trigger additional treatment or additional measures. You've been watching the Dr. Alex Answers video podcast. Remember to subscribe and head over to DrAlexAnswers.com for any links, downloads, and get your question answered.